Well, hi there. I'm Jonathan Lagang, and this is my love story. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for tuning in. This is um, a season of love, a season of um, Valentine. And I thought to share this little piece with us. And I trust it will inspire us um, as that's what we love to do. So if I knew, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can keep getting notifications on whatever it is we post. Well, let me start this love story by telling a story that you may find amusing. I was told this story by my father years ago. That there was this couple, a young boy and a young lady, um, who were in love. And um, it was a love story of theirs that was filled with so many promises and of course so many expectations. And, and you know you know how men are they can say so many things once they are attracted to an individual and so he will tell this lady I love you oh you are the best thing that ever happened to me you are the greatest treasure I have and all kinds of sweet words that he felt she needed to hear but then something happened so there was this day um, it was a rainy day, heavily, um, heavy downpours, and the young lady was sick, very, very sick, and she was bedridden. So she spoke to her younger brother and said to him, please go and call my love. I'm not sure if I can make it out of this sickness, but I would like to see him and be with him just in case I will pass away. And the young lad went out under the rain was heavy by the time he got to the house of um, the man he was wet already and then um, well he had to do it because of his sister and he told the young man what his sister said and here was the reply of the young man thinking that he was going to dash out of the house immediately and run straight into the arms of his love he said to the young lad he said well um i really do love her but please tell her it is raining and i can't come out of the house until the rain is over and so the poor boy had to go back quite disappointed and frustrated back under the downpour and to his sister and told him exactly what the young man said my love I truly love you, I can do anything for you, but as it stands, it's a rainy day and I can't risk coming under that rain, lest I get sick. Now this just tells you or this just defines to you the limitations of um, what we humans define as love. And so that's why we're having this video so we can briefly define what love really is and then come to an understanding so we understand what we're celebrating this season. Well, of course, Greek mythology uh, gives us a lot of education as far as history is concerned. Um, Greek language was the common language of civilization in those days. So many things were defined or identified in Greek. Now, there are three Greek words for love. Number one, there is eros. Eros is also the root word for the English word erotic. Eros means physical or sexual kind of love. This is a kind of love that should happen between a husband and a wife. Emphasis on should because unfortunately many people have engaged in this kind of love not being lawfully wedded. Then there is filio. Filio is the love of friendship, the love that exists between two or more people who are friends, um, who are or family members who are commonly related. 
But then there is also agape. Agape is the unconditional kind of love. This love can only be gotten from one source, and that is God. Of course, in John 15, 13, the Bible says, Greater love has no man than this, than a man should lay down his life for his friend. That is the extent of filial love, that a man can actually die for a friend. But there is still a condition there. The fact that it's a friend he or she is dying for means that if it was just a stranger, they would not be afforded that privilege. But agape love is a love that is without condition or restraint. As a matter of fact, I dare to say it's the love that cannot be understand, understood you know, by human faculties because it is not bounded by anything. It stretches beyond the horizon of human emotions. This is truly my love story. You know, there are when when we when we read the Bible, we discover that God displayed and manifested this agape love that we talk about when He sent His Son Jesus to die for us. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We had no relationship with him. We had no connection with him. He wasn't sure he was going to gain. I mean, he would have done that and would look at him in his face and say, to hell with your sacrifice. He, he stood to lose everything. And yet, he had so much to gain. But it was a risk he took when he died for mankind to be redeemed. This is agape love. This is a love that is without condition. This is a love that stretches beyond the boundaries of human emotion. This is a love that cannot be understood or quantified by human faculty, by the intelligence of the human mind. This is also, sadly, the love that is scarcely expressed or manifested in our world today. We live in a world that is unfortunately filled with a lot of selfish imputes from humans. And you don't blame them. It's natural for a human being to be selfish. We'll always think about ourselves first before others. <laughs> you know, those days when I heard the word selfish when I was very small, I thought it was referring to someone who sold fish. So every time I heard someone was selfish, I would try to go near them to perceive if they had the smell of fish on them. <laughs> but you may not selfish and still be selfish you know and that's the human kind of love it's always going to look out for you first before the others it's always about your emotions it's always about your decisions what you want it's always about living in your fantasy it's always not going to allow you make positive compromises for the good of a mutual relationship that's the human kind of love. Well, finally, before we go, I would like to leave you with this. I believe that there are four stages in the experience of love. Four stages. You may want to take note of these four. First of all, there is a stage called attraction. This is an uncommon and unusual connection that you sense with a person. You are attracted to something. You are connected to something. It's a language of the heart. It's not really something you can understand um, at the instant. It's usually not a mind thing. It's a heart thing. So it's not to say I like this person because when there are likes or dislikes, there are conditions. This is just a sudden and uncommon um, feeling of connection that you have with an individual i believe that love starts at that point and this is what will cause you to draw close to that person and it leads you to the next stage which i call affection affection is now you are drawn to who you are attracted to and then you begin a relationship with that person you begin to communicate and then as the communication grows you begin to know and understand each other. These are the formative stages of intimacy. Intimacy is actually the highest 
stage of um, affection because that is where your knowledge of that person grows to a point where you feel like you know them in and out. You know the person as much as the person knows you. You can predict the lifestyle of that person, what he or she likes. You get to see what is common between the two of you and what um, makes you stand individually unique. This is called intimacy. So at this stage called affection, intimacy is attained. And when I say intimacy, I'm not necessarily saying intimacy like between a husband and a wife. No, intimacy is simply knowledge at its peak. And then the third stage is the stage I call addiction. So you go from attraction to affection where you grow to know that person, shower, a lot of love, time, and attention on that person, and then it grows to addiction. Because you've spent so much time with this person, you've grown in communication with this person, you know they are in and out, and they know and understand you like you do them. You know, you, you are just so tangled up in some form of emotional space that it now looks like you are inseparable. You, you simply cannot be detached from this person. It's a wonderful thing when a man experiences this stage of love with Jesus Christ. Because you would have developed habits that have bounded you to this individual or to this entity. In fact, this is simply the stage where you are conquered or where you surrender. This leads you to the fourth and final stage, which is affirmation. This is a stage where you make commitments. This is the covenant stage of love. At this point, it is almost impossible for you to be detached from that individual. Affirmation. This is where your love for that person has grown with your faith in that person, which gives birth to trust. You now trust that person so well that it is difficult for you to believe a lie told on that person. Even when there is a lie or when that person is involved in something that is not too good, you've already gotten to a point where you have been bonded by your words and your whole life you have simply committed yourself to this person. Um, I call it the covenant stage because this is where words of affirmation are spoken this is where this is where oaths are taken you know most times especially in our generation gen z we really don't have respect for covenant again we because we don't understand what it means that when you tell a person i love you and i want to spend the rest of my life with you it's a commitment you've made and you will have to go through high mountains and deep valleys to prove that word it's a covenant. You, you've made an oath. You, you've made a promise that you must not break. That's why I love to fall in love with God. He's the only one who makes a covenant and keeps it. You know, we often change as human beings. So here you have the four stages of love. Number one, attraction. Number two, affection. This is where all of the gifts and communication and time and everything happens but it is not to end there it's meant to lead you to the place of addiction where you become inseparable from this person this is a place where you surrender yourself willingly or you are conquered and then finally leads us to affirmation this is where you make commitments to eternally stay with this person it is my prayer that as we celebrate love this season that we will experience all of these stages of love, especially in our relationship with God. Because I believe it's only when you truly know and understand the love of God that you can reflect that love to humanity and what a need we have in our world today for this kind of love. Thank you. Till I see you again. God bless you.